Well, it is almost 2018. 2017 is almost gone, and it's been a long year with a lot of stuff going on. Another big year of lots more jobs coming in. I had more jobs come in every month than go out. A lot of work, which I'm always grateful for. Uh, a lot of people seem to be watching the videos, which I appreciate. I hope that they're useful and entertaining and correct. And if I'm, if they're not entertaining, let me know. If there's something you want to see, tell me about it. If you have questions, ask. Uh, I'm always happy to talk watches and so with my videos I'm always striving to make them better but it's uh, you know any suggestions you have I'm, I'm happy to hear but I wanted to talk about the last year in terms of things that have changed in my collection things that are things that are new things that I've added this has been a year where I've added back a number of classic core models that I had previously gotten rid of um, for one reason or another so this is not going to be chronological. I just thought I'd put them out there. This was the year I got back a Marine Master. I had only owned one. Um, and the one that I had owned had been, uh, the original owner had bought it and immediately brushed the entire case and then decided he didn't like it. And then he uh, <laughs> he sold it to me. And I, I just, it drove me nuts. And so I uh, I, I never wore it and then I sold it. And, I, and, and I, I had an opportunity to pick up one of these and uh, if for a pretty good bargain, it was missing a lot of its bracelet, but some, some people here very kindly were willing to help out and work with trade or gift, and I was able to rebuild a complete bracelet, and it's a nice watch, I like it. It needs service, it's an older piece, but it still runs well, and I, I'm, I'm so pleased to see it back, and it's a nice watch. One of the things I like the most about it that I had forgotten was actually the sort of the tannish loom. It's not like a full, like, one of the fake tropic loom things going on, but it's it's got a little bit of that. It's not greenish. It's a nice watch. I'm, I'm happy to have it back. I had, uh, this is the year, in the same vein, I added back a panda. These are, as you know, they're hard to find, but especially they're hard to find with the dial being in really good condition. This one is, I mean, and this one is additionally nice because the case hasn't really been polished. It's worn, but it's it's all there, and it it's it's got this unique thing: is that the the this lower hand was replaced with a teardrop, which I think is actually gives it personality. And so I left it. And these are so hard to find now. They're almost also hacked up. That one's got a nice style. I don't wear it as often as I should, but I really want to, you know, keep some classic things in the box. This is one of them. Nice watch. This is the year that I finally added back in a really decent true Pogue. This is a nice one. I mean, that's that's all original. It's all original. That's it's nutty condition. I mean, the idea that this watch, you know, was barely touched. I mean, it was somebody's watch, but they never abused it. That's what good looks like. And again, it's one of these ones where I felt I should have one in the. Uh, and so there it is. It's a nice piece. That's what good looks like. Nice bright hands. Again, in the theme of putting back models that I had previously gotten rid of, this was the year I brought a slide rule back. 6138, 7000. This one came to me from a good friend, Saul Brook. Hi, Saul. He watches my videos on his giant TV, he says. So Saul, there it is. Changed some things up, but it's nice to have been able to add one of these back in. They're so cool. They're going up in value so quickly. It's one of the other reasons I wanted to add a lot of these models back in is that they're going up in value so quickly that it's, if I don't add them now, they're, they're not going to be addable. So when I find things in the right condition, if I can add them, I will. This watch came here for service, and the owner, it was his father's watch, and he, he just didn't... I don't know, he, it wasn't a priority to him to invest in it. He wanted to put money somewhere else, and so he sold this to me. And that's, I mean, that's original. That's that's a watch. You want to talk about a UFO, Ooh, goodness gracious. I mean, it's not perfect, but boy, it's very, very good. I don't think his father wore it much, if at all. And that's fully serviced, and it's a nice piece. I love that sort of, especially when these are really fresh, and you have this sort of pumpkin orange on them. Really nice, and it's all original loom. That's a nice watch. There's such a classic 
elegant, beautiful design. They're so pretty, so manly, very purposeful, purposeful design. Uh, this was the year I finally added back in the Stargate. After thinking about them for a long time, and then I started looking for them and realizing just how difficult they were to find, how hard they were to find. These are just, they just don't come up anymore. I was super duper duper lucky. I got this one for like 150 bucks, which I still can't believe. But they're hard to find, these Gen 1 Stargates. And I just think they're really cool. I wore this one actually, I wore the Stargate to see the new Star Wars movie. So Stargate and Star Wars, it was really fun. Uh, movie had its challenges. You know, I'm, I'm more of a Star Trek guy than a Star Wars guy, but I did see, I have seen all the Star Wars films in the theater, even the first one. Anyway, Stargate, these are really cool. You come across one of these, now's the time to pick them up. They're criminally underrated watch in my opinion. Something else came to me this year. Now, I never added one before because I never had one because these are so rare. The James Bond 7A28. These are, these are 7A28, 7A20. These are hard to come by. I've only seen a few of these. And this one was uh, a regular customer. He wrote me out of the blue and said, hey, I've got this. Do you want to buy it? I was like, well, sh well, sure. So I picked it up. I need to service this one. It hasn't been serviced. It's a little, the main sweep hangs up a little bit, but it's a, it's a good watch, but goodness, these are rare. It's amazing. Seiko made a million billion of the gold ones, but these white ones, God, you think if they're promoting the, the thing in a movie, they would make more of them, but they didn't. I don't know why. Super cool, though. This was a year or two where I added something interesting. This was my birthday watch, and I got this, I found this as a in a lot. I found this on eBay and I bought it for my birthday and it was sold as having extensive water damage. Uh, it didn't have any water damage at all. So I'm a little confused about that. This, this here is a Omega Speedmaster Mark IV with a Lamania 5100 in it. It's a super cool watch. Um, I had a lot of fun servicing this watch, but it was as you see it. It's amazing. I still can't believe that I got it for what I did. Original Speedmaster. They're wacky. They're wacky. I have to admit, I actually don't wear this one that much because the case is so big and the dial is relatively speaking small. I need to just sort of man up and wear it more. It's just, it's such a really, it's such a cool watch with, uh, you know, that, that, that minute, that big minute counter hand right there because that's how these operate is instead of having a, a sub-dial that, that is a minute counter, it's this hand right here, and it's a smoothly advancing minute counter, so it smoothly advances as this thing goes around. This is your running seconds, and it's got a 24-hour hand right there. It's a really, uh, that, that this whole little black circle turns. They're cool watches. I just need to wear it more. Original bracelet and everything. Still can't believe I found that. Super cool. Now I want to get an Omega Mark II. This was the year I started getting a little more interested in Swiss chronographs. Speaking of that, I found this, and I can I bought this, and I still can't believe it was sold as serviced. I'm like, come on, it's not serviced. It can't be. And I got the watch in, and it was serviced. I couldn't believe it. I didn't have to do anything to this watch. Lovely thing. Landron 51. It's smaller, but it's so elegant. And one of the things that's nice is these are unsealed cases. Unsealed. And so it's rare to see these without water damage in them. And so normally the lumen's all blackened and the movement's all stained. But this one's actually, it's really nice. It's really super nice. And it's got the original nice tan lumen on them. A beautiful thing. Beautiful watch. Runs like a dream. Runs like a dream. Uh... I already have one of these, but I thought I'd add it anyway. This came in, a metal detectorist found this watch. It was literally, it was buried. It was buried for decades. And uh, he sent it to me, and the movement was pretty, pretty poor, poorly off. I opened it up, and there was actually liquid. Like, it looked like almost like mud inside the movement, and the dial was worked over. Um, so I had to restore the dial. Um, 
but uh, the case is incredibly nice for having been buried for decades. The being buried sort of ghosted out the insert a little bit. It's very interesting. Uh, I was able to bring the movement back. I had to replace a lot of it um, and really work it to try to get the pieces that were left to actually be clean, but it's pretty neat, and it runs beautifully now. Isn't that cool? I love these. It's from 1969. This was the year, uh, the first year that I've owned a Citizen in a really long time. I picked this one up. EPSS-2Y or whatever this is. These are really cool. Rarely, rarely, rarely seen. Especially not in the JDM version like this. Citizen 7 Star Perilwater. I got this uh, straight out of Japan. And I just loved the look of it. And it's got this sort of star-spangled dial sort of glitter dial from patina it wasn't made that way very cool but a beautiful movement beautiful movement and it hand winds and it automatic winds um it's a compressor style case but it's not actually compressor case tech it just looks that way it's it, but it's a beautiful movement beautiful watch completely original uh, the crystal's original. Uh, I did completely service it, and I was able to rebuild both crowns with new seals. And that's a cool addition. I should wear this more often. This was the year of the... This is the year, the first year that I finally got a Darth Tuna. I added this in. Again, a customer wanted to have some work done on this, but then he it was belonged to a friend of his, but then he offered to sell it. And so I picked it up, and we talked about a price, and I got it. And it's cool. It's a cool watch. It's really cool, actually. I really like it. Um, thousand meter, and it's the first gen. It's the early one that only has the two lines of text here. It's very, very clean. It's a clean design. That's just such a purposeful, awesome, manly watch. This first gen watch, first gen one. I think they're just the best ones. Super cool with a stock sapphire dial. Seiko tested these things on the outside of a bathyscaphe and ran it down to like 3,000 meters. And the only reason the watch stopped is the crystal was pressed in and touched the hand and stopped it running. That was it. This was the year of the 62 MAS reissue. And so I felt that, again, like these other watches, I should really add one to the box. And again, a customer traded one to me for another watch that I had. And we worked together and came up with a trade. It was a sort of, a, not a basket case, but it was definitely a project. And I had to do serious work to bring it back uh, to repair. I had to, re I had to put new dial feet on this dial, which is always fun. I had to restore the movement completely, but I didn't have to touch the loom. That's original loom, the original dial, it's original case finish. And it's, it's, it's beautiful. It's nice. And I'm very glad to have one in the box and it's a, it's a good watch. And these movements, these six, 6,000 series movements, these early ones, in the, if they're in good condition, they run super, super well. So that's, that's the core of the neat stuff that I had. The last things that I had was sort of a surprise. I didn't expect these to come in. My grandfather's brother died last year, uh, my great uncle Dick. Um, and he was a really nice guy. He was a really nice guy. And when my cousin was going through the house, uh, he found two watches that belonged to my great uncle. Um, and he sent them to me, and they were both badly, badly damaged, terribly, terribly damaged, with moisture mostly. First, he sent me this, 1959 Omega 321 Seamaster, and it was, this was tremendous fun to try to bring back, uh, servicing the movement, replace the balance, I had to do, uh, I had to make case clamps for it, um, I had to do... I'd repair the dial feet, uh, and this dial surface, all this patina, this brown stuff here, this was that's the top clear coat, just and it was just flaking off. It was sitting on top of the dial like leaves on a sidewalk, and I had to do some crazy restoration. I had to, I had to mask all of these markers very carefully, mask all these markers with a sort of a beeswax compound, and then I used a a, a matte clear coat for modeling to gently 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 coat this just incredibly thin layer to hold down all this stuff because it was all coming off and I had to do that a couple times and then I had to very carefully clean the wax off and then put it all back together so this was a challenge my grandfather my grand uncle great uncle was I think he was in an accident with this watch it's got this thump over here 
and this lug is bent. And when I got the watch, it had blood on it, like blood right here. But the movement came through more or less okay. The biggest challenge besides doing all the labor was finding the balance, but I found one in France. There it is. Isn't that neat? Beautiful old Omega Seamaster. Oh, and this button was snapped off and the crown was broken internally. I think, he, I think Uncle Dick got into a wreck with it. And then here's the greatest thing. His Rolex Explorer. And this was destroyed. It was destroyed. He had clearly gone into... He had a pool. And he had clearly gone into the pool. And the watch had filled with water. And it was... It was junk. It was rusted solid inside. And it... I'm not even going to tell you the dollar amount that it took me to buy the parts to bring this watch back. And the dial was destroyed. Uh, which is too bad, and it was a, actually a, a rare dial variant. Uh, it was a it was a an early specific text, uh, and it was a gilt lacquered dial, and it was just destroyed. I mean, it's sort of there, but it looks bad. This is a service dial from the 1970s, but the movement was literally like a block of rust. I replaced everything. Look at the rust on it. It took so much work, and it's still not 100% right. The auto-winding mechanism doesn't wind as nicely as it should, but it runs sweetly. I had a lot of help with this, and bought a lot of parts, invested a lot of money, 30-plus hours of labor. It's the original handset. The loom was just gone. I re-loomed this, this original handset to match this style, this service style. But what an elegant watch. Even when it first came in and I was holding it, even though I could see it was destroyed, I could just, you could feel the quality of it. And these are really lovely watches. I need to figure out why the auto wind is not working, but that's a really cool watch. I'm very happy with it. I loved my Uncle Dick. He was a great guy. And I'm so grateful to my cousin uh, for sending these to me, for gifting these to me. It was very, very kind of them, even though, you know, they were so challenged and needed so much work, I was happy to do it. You know, I didn't have anything to remember my Uncle Dick by, but now I do. My wife stole this one from me. She wears it, but I wear this one. Anyway, so it's been a very interesting year. Thank you so much for all your views and your comments and your input and your support. And all those things, I, I appreciate all of it. It's uh, a wonderful blessing every day to get up and be able to do this kind of work and speak to all you wonderful owners and help people out and try to find find extra things for people and get, bring their watches back. It's a wonderful, wonderful privilege to be able to do this kind of work for people. I, I enjoy it every day and I'm grateful every day for everything that I have and I hope for the best for you in 2018. Okay. Thank you so much.